Peace TV English, the solution for humanity. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and my dear brothers and sisters in humanity I welcome all of you with the greetings of peace Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah we are going through a series of interviews on a very interesting and a heart touching and a soul soothing topic of the virtues of the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And to enlighten us on this subject, we have our dear Sheikh from UK, Sheikh Dr. Haytham Al Haddad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, alhamdulillah, we have done quite a good number of episodes talking about the various virtues and the various rulings pertaining to the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And in the previous episode, we spoke about the day of Arafah and its virtues. There is one issue which we have to discuss related to the day of Arafah, that there is a concept of dhikr mutlaq and dhikr muqayyid. So what is this concept? Would you like to please tell our audiences that what is the difference between the dhikr mutlaq and dhikr muqayyid? Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. You know, we said that the acts of ibadah in general are heavily regulated by sharia. However, with certain acts of ibadah, there is a level of flexibility within the guidelines. For example, the dhikr. Certain types of dhikr should be followed strictly. Certain types of dhikr are heavily regulated by sharia. Ah, and so we have to follow the sunnah carefully, accurately, strictly. For example, in the adhkar of the morning, the adhkar of the evening, the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever says, Bismillah al-Ladhi la yadurru ma'asmi shayyun fil ardu wa la fil sama, wa huwa sami'u al-alim three times, nothing will harm him in the morning, in the evening. You can't say, Bismillah al-Ladhi la yadurru ma'asmi shayyun fil ardu wa la fil sama, wa huwa al-aziz al-hakim. Do it is good, but it yet... It is good. No, do it as the Prophet Sallallahu taught us to do it. MashaAllah. Okay? This is in general. On the other side, there are types of dhikr that the Prophet ﷺ made it open for us. For example, the Prophet ﷺ said, لا أن أقول سبحان الله والحمد لله والله أكبر خير مما طلعت عليه الشمس to say سبحان الله والحمد لله الله أكبر is better than the dunya, the entire dunya. Yeah, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever says سبحان الله, a plant, a tree will be planted for him in Jannah. A tree is not like those trees. Huh? Yeah? The Prophet ﷺ once described the tree that you need 1,000 or the rider needs 1,000 years in order to travel around it. Allahu Akbar. So this, is there any limit how many times you say Subhanallah? Or Subhanallah, Bihamdi, Subhanallah, Al-Azim, Kalimatani, Khafifatani, Ala Lisan, two words, easy on the tongue, heavy on the scale, pleasing. To Allah. Definitely. Is there any limit? Say no limit. them. 100 times, 200 times, 300 times, 170 times, 60 times, whatever. Say Subhanallah, Bihamdi, Subhanallah, Al Adim, Subhanallah, Bihamdi, Subhanallah, Al Adim, anytime. Okay? So, some dhikr, some adhkar are restricted in terms of time, place, number, but other types of adhkar, they are not restricted. Mm -hmm. Same thing, the dhikr of Allah Jalla wa ala and takbir during these 10 days. This scholar said there is mutlaq unrestricted dhikr. So during these days, 
you just say subhanallah alhamdulillah la ilaha illallah allahu akbar or subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanallah al azim subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanallah al azim subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanallah al azim or you make 10000 times la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al mulk wa lahu al hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir this dhikr is what unrestricted unconditional this scholar said that it was reported through some of the tabi'in that they used to do some restricted dhikr alongside with the unrestricted dhikr in particular after the congregational prayers they used to make dhikr <laughs> they used to make takbir tasbih tahmid etc this would be the zikr muqayyad this is the zikr muqayyad this is what the scholars say the zikr muqayyad after fard salah in congregation yeah the people not as a gathering dhikr no everyone by himself but loudly Mm-hmm. they say the dhikr طيب obviously you know it was reported three forms of dhikr or maybe more than that to say allahu akbar allahu akbar la ilaha illa allah allahu akbar walillahi alhamd or to say it three times allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar la ilaha illa allah and then allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar walillahi alhamd or allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar and then different forms which means that the matter is flexible So this is dhikr muqayyad. Dhikr mutlaq continues from the beginning of Dhil Hijjah yeah, up to the 13th of Dhil Hijjah. Okay. Up to the 13th of Dhil Hijjah is what? The last day of Tashriq. Tashriq. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Ayyamu Tashriq, Ayyamu Aklin wa Shurbin wa Dhikrin Lillah. There are days for eating, eating drinking, drinking and dhikr of Allah. Remembrance of Allah. So this is unconditional do it any time Now the conditional the restricted one they said for the non hajji people those who did not go for hajj they are not doing talbiya mm-hmm. So for them they start the dhikr from the morning of Arafah they pray fajr and then they start the dhikr all the way until the 13th of Dhul Hijjah after every salah after fajr after duhr after asr maghrib and isha the non hajis they start from the 9th of dhul hijjah the morning 9th of dhul hijjah yeah after fajr after duhr after asr after maghrib okay but for the hajji people during hajj during ihram is better for them to be engaged in what in the talbiyah. talbiyah when they remove their ihram on the 10th day and the 10th day because they will go for stoning first and then nahr and then tawaf and then they will come back to mina when they come back to mina خلاص they have removed their ihram so the sunnah for them is no more talbiyah for them mm-hmm. so the sunnah for them is to start the restricted conditional dhikr okay which is okay after Dhuhr, Asr, again, after Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, up to the 13th. The 13th. Inshallah. Yeah? Whenever they remove Ihram, up to the 13th after the Salawat. Okay, mashallah. So we learned that, alhamdulillah, there is one zikr mutlaq, which is to be done right from the first day of Dhul Hijjah until the 13th for those of them who are not performing the Hajj. For the Hujjaj, they have both. They do the talbiyah during the days and on the 10th, that is the Yawm al-Nahr, after, after they, they have removed their ihram and they have sorted and they put on their regular clothes, they start with the zikr muqayyid, yes. which is the takbir that which we do normally. Jazakallah khair, yes. Shaykh. Uh, let's move on to the final day, the day of Yawm al-Nahr, yes. the 10th of Dhul Hijjah. So what are its virtues and what are the different rulings related to this day? Jazakallah khair. Yawm al-Nahr, as we said, there is a hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ said the best of the days is Yawm al-Nahr. Some scholars said it is better even than Yawm al-Arafah. Most of the scholars believe that Yawm al-Arafah is better. Anyway, the matter is, okay, a matter of disagreement between the scholars. Again, once we talk about Yawm al-Nahr, are we talking about the 10th day of the Hijjah for the Hujjaj? Or are we talking about the 10th day of the Hijjah for the non-Hujjaj? So we need to make that reference clear. Yes. Okay. It seems that, again, most of the hadith that talk about the virtues 
of the last day of the 10 days of Dil Hijjah, which is Yawm Nahar, the 10th. They talk about it for the Hujjaj. But again, as we said about the day of Arafah, the Rahmah of Allah Jalla wa Ala can extend to cover the non Hajji or the non Hujjaj. Okay. So it is still, even for those who did not go for Hajj, it is a very virtuous day. However, we do not fast in it. Mm -hmm. So this is the first ruling. It is the day of Eid. Eid. And we have two Eids in Islam. Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. And Eid al-Adha. When the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina and he found them enjoying their time and playing in one of the days, he said, what is this? They said, this is the Eid of so-and-so. He said, no. Allah Jalla wa Ala gave me better Eids. What are those better Eids? The Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. And then he said, these are our Eid, the people of Islam. So we as Muslims have two or three Eids. Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha. And Jum'ah, it was narrated in some ahadith and some statements of the early scholars that it is also our Eid, which is the weekly Eid. Mashallah. Other than that, we do not have any Eid. MashaAllah, so we need to recognize them as the symbols of Islam and we need to celebrate them with all the enjoyment in a halal way, alhamdulillah. Inshallah, we will take a break now and we will resume to continue talking about the day of Eid and its various rulings. Crying out to the heavens on the plains of Arafat, Muhammad, peace be upon Pearls of Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Narrated Abdullah bin Amr. May Allah be pleased with him. A man asked the Prophet, May peace be upon him. What sort of deeds in Islam are good? The Prophet, may peace be upon him, replied, To feed others and to greet those whom you know and those whom you do not know. Sahih Al-Bukhari, Volume 1, Book of Faith, Hadith Number 12. Where truth is hidden, misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulate scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth and who has the courage to expose it? Because it's the right to know the truth. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik every Sunday to Friday at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Although Christianity doesn't have a single credible source to justify her claims of the crucifixion, she yet continues to propagate her myth. They do this by hiding many of their deceptions behind cleverly designed doctrines. Did you know that Christianity stands or falls at the cross? So how did they do this? Join me for the series called The Cross Question. Probe the past that proves Christianity in practice is fictitious in The Cross Questioned. Next on Peace TV. Crying out to the heavens on the plains of Arafat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back after the break. 
Sheikh, we were talking about the day of Eid, that is the Yomun Nahar and its virtues. Yes. So we said that it is a Eid for us. What should we do? The first ruling is we are not allowed to fast. It's haram. The Prophet ﷺ prohibited that. If we fast, it is haram and it is invalid as well. This is the first ruling. The second ruling for the non Hajji people, it is highly recommended that they attend the Eid Salah. Highly recommended. For the Hajji people, obviously, their Eid Salah, as some scholars said, is to stone the Jamrat al Aqaba. Because this is the Sunnah for them, is to leave Muzdalifah before Shuruq and directly, they need to go directly to Mina. Mina. They will reach Mina after Shuruq, which is the time for what? For Eid Salah. For the Eid Salah. It is the time. The Eid Salah is to be performed after the Shuruq. The Shuruq. A few minutes after the Shuruq, 15 minutes or so after the Shuruq, which is likely the time we or people arrive to Mina. Now, as you know, people arrive to Mina much later than this. So they will perform what? Stoning. This is like the Salah of Eid for them. Like the Salah of Eid. So it is not Sunnah for them to leave that Rami in order to perform Salah Eid, Eid. Salah. But for the non Hajji people, it is Sunnah for them to go for Salah. And as Umm Atiyah radiallahu ta'ala anha, one of the great female companions, she said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us to take for Eid, to attend Eid, women who are in their menses, young ladies, and those girls who have reached the age of puberty as well. All, All of them. to go. For those sisters or for those women who are having their menses, they can stay away from the gathering during the Salah. They just stay away from the gathering during the Salah. Why? The Prophet Sallallahu said, Yashhadna al-Khayr. They attend the Dua of the Muslims, the Takbir of the Muslims, the gathering of the Muslims. What is more important is the gathering of yes, the Muslims. Yes, yes. Now, many scholars believe that Salatul Eid is wajib. Wajib. They said it is one of the Symbols of Islam. Right. One of the symbols of Islam. And that's why we need to keep this salah, to perform this salah everywhere we go. Because subhanallah, I'm living in the West. It is really one of the symbols of Muslim. On their Eid day, they go, they dress well, and they go to perform their salah. In some countries, unfortunately, what is left for Muslims is to pray Eid. They don't pray Jum'ah, they don't pray other prayers, but they come and pray their Eid. So this is the most important thing. Now, what is the philosophy of Eid, you know, from an Islamic perspective, as we are talking about it? Eid is to make takbir of Allah, shukr of Allah, to be thankful to Allah, to glorify Allah, to establish the oneness of Allah. This is the main element of the Eid. Other elements wearing nice clothes, celebrating it, are secondary elements. Okay. And to do this while you are attending the gathering of Muslims, and this gives you a sense of happiness and being proud of or being confident of your deen. It gives a positive message. And this is the meaning of the Eid. MashaAllah. This is the essence of the Eid, because many people... I met a few converted brothers and sisters and they do not understand what are we celebrating. Okay, they don't understand the meaning of the Eid. In fact, if we want to be more accurate, Allah Jalla wa Ala said about Eid al-Fitr, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنُ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيَّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ The one who witnesses the month, he should fast the month. وَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفِرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنَ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah 
desires ease for you and Allah does not desire hardship for you. وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ And you complete the count. What does that mean? As the scholar said, once Allah Jalla wa'ala has given us the chance to fast the month of Ramadan, we should be happy celebrating that opportunity that was granted to us. Allah. This is the philosophy of it. So Eid for us and those days of celebrations, we are not celebrating dunya. We are not celebrating any matter. We don't know what is it. We are celebrating that Allah Jalla has given us this chance. And that's why we glorify him. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And that's why it is the Sunnah in the Eid, whether Eid Fatr or Eid Al-Adha, to leave to the Salah while what? Making takbir. Loud for the men and for the women folks quietly. Yes, loudly for men and for women. They can do it among themselves and not to cause fitna. Okay? Of course, normally when we say loud, it is if you can't do it even in non-Muslim countries loudly without causing harm, mm-hmm. yeah, do it. But if you are going to cause harm, طيب, then don't do it. But the issue is don't be embarrassed. That's correct. You should not feel shy. Yes, because this is part of our religion. Islamic identity, uh, part of our way of life, part of our religion. طيب, Allah Jalla Ala says, وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Same thing, they said the sunnah for Salatul Eid Al-Adha is to leave to your house, glorifying Allah Jalla Ala making takbir. They also said, quickly about the sunnah of the Eid, is that the sunnah for Eid Al-Fitr is to delay the salah a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so people will eat before going to Eid. Mm-hmm. For Eid Al-Adha, the sunnah is the opposite. Bring the salah forward. That's right. This is for the imam, in order for people to go immediately and slaughter. And the sunnah for them is to break their fast on their udhiya, if possible. If possible. And we said that the udhiya, the time to slaughter the udhiya starts after what? After, after the offering the, of the Eid Salah. The Eid Salah. Again, so we said the sunnah is that everyone goes for the Eid Salah. Women in their menses, they can stay aside. Obviously, they will not pray the Salat al-Eid, but they will attend the khair and the dua of the Muslims. They said also it is sunnah to wear the best clothes or nice clothes or new clothes, whatever. Umar ibn al-Khattab wanted to buy something for the Prophet sallallahu good clothes, a good aba'a. He said in order to wear it during Eid. So they understood from this that it is sunnah to wear uh, the best of clothes, clothes available. Also, Ibn Umar used to have a shower Ghusl, before going to the Eid. This is again sunnah, sunnah of the Eid. Also, they said that you can extend the greetings between yourselves. Okay, Mubarak for the Eid. Kullu amantu bakhir. The matter is flexible. They also said that it is good to spend more on your family Definitely. on the day of you know, the as Eid. As well as walking towards the Musalla, yeah. taking one path and changing the path. And coming while from returning. another path. In terms of the Salah of the Eid, now the Imams, they know how to perform the Salah, but the Sunnah for Salah, quickly, is to perform two rak'ah before the Khutbah. So you attend the place, the Imam will come to the gathering of the people, and he will start with the Salah, mm-hmm. two rak'ah. Two rak'ah, and the first rak'ah, he will do seven takbirs after takbirat al-ihram. So he will say, Allahu Akbar, as a opening takbir, and then, he will say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said that takbir is seven after takbirat al-ihram, the first rak'ah, and five in the second rak'ah. And then the imam, after the salat al-eid, he should go to the pulpit, if there is a pulpit, and he should give, again, two khutbas. Most of the scholars believe that two khutbas, similar to the jum'ah, and after the two khutbas, he can leave and the people can leave. People even can leave during the two khutbas. As the scholar said, it is not wajib to attend them. It is good to attend them. MashaAllah. Some scholars believe that it is one khutbah. In any way, it is a matter of disagreement. Related to this is that if the Eid falls on the day of Jummah, 
So is there any concession that a person can either attend Salah or Jummah? The scholars have different views regarding it. One view says if you pray one, don't pray the other. To be on the safe side, pray both. Except for those who have to travel mm-hmm. long distances to attend to the Eid Salah. The Eid or the Jum'ah. Mm-hmm. So it is not feasible for them to attend both. Mm-hmm. Maybe this is applicable in some small towns. People don't have any place to pray their Eid or to pray their Jum'ah. Or it's difficult for them to travel to pray Eid and then to travel again to pray Jum'ah. Mm-hmm. But apart from this, where the Masajid are there, it's better to be on the safe side and pray both of them. Yeah, this will cover most of the rulings regarding the Eid, and this will, inshallah, by this we have covered most of the rulings regarding the first 10 days of the Hijjah. Jazakallah khairan, Shaykh. Alhamdulillah. We have covered many of the virtues of the first 10 days of the Hijjah, and it was a real source of inspiration. May Allah reward Zakallah. you with abundant Amen. good Shaykh. And Jazakallah for coming all the way from UK to give your valuable and precious time to share your knowledge of Islam and especially the knowledge that which has been gained in the series of the virtues of the first 10 days of Dhul-Hijjah. We pray for you that inshallah you join us again and come to India and give more such wonderful series for the benefit of the audience on Peace TV. And Jazakallah Khair for being with us for this entire series and we hope and we pray to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala so whatever we have learned in this series we implement it in our lives. It is for myself as well as for all the viewers that we strive our utmost best to implement the knowledge that which we gain. And inshallah, we pray to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala that he accepts our worship and he accepts this series as a sawab e for all the team members of this series. Jazakallahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, that is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV.